So what is the thing? Um, so with, what, what actually is the thing? So in the thing that, thing you can think about is the presentation layer. The presentation layer. So it displays the concept, concept of the website visitors based on a set of templates. And the templates are what you create in order to then install different components of the CMS. Um, and Drupal.org uh, defines it as a theme, the collection of files that define the presentation layer. But basically what we're doing is we're thinking of, think of it as the index.html with all the static components turned into PHP variables. So in Drupal, do you have to create a theme to change the layout of your site? No, you don't have to create a theme. Um, you can use other modules. There's modules like panels, um, display suite, enough so panels enable you to create pretty complex layouts and you can do that from a good administration area. Um, you can also add your own CSS and style into those layouts. Display suite is another one that kind of enables you to set up and structure a, a page. Sorry Dinia, I don't even come right back to you. Um, and Skinner, uh, which is Skinner for Drupal 6, Fusion Accelerator for Drupal 7 is another one that allows you to just apply CSS classes and stuff into pages and stuff. So you don't actually have to be doing changes of that theme. So you might have a theme that you're happy with, but you just want to change some of the layouts of it. These modules and other modules like that are kind of a way to go. So, but as we said, they only change the layout of the pages. They're not actually changing the frame of the pages themselves. So, some of the font might be a bit wrong because I've moved it between PowerPoint and um, Adobe. So, index.html, which is kind of a traditional way of doing it, versus page.tpl.php. Alright, so if you're a traditional site, this is our traditional web page.html. So, what we've got on here is we're doing calls, we're putting our meta tags, we're putting a title on our page, we're calling it a slideshow script, um, we're putting a couple of divs, putting out a menu. Uh, putting out some content on the page. So this is the kind of old way in sense that we used to manage these pages. So you could have probably one of the largest sites I've ever worked on, but we had about maybe six and a half thousand HTML pages that were all maintained by hand <laughs> um, across 500 different clients. <laughs> um, so it used to be a lot of literally every time I wanted to make a change, um, I'd have to open every single individual HTML file. Um, so, not, not the easiest to do it. What do we get from a CMS? Um, I guess one thing to take a step back from this and really say, what is a CMS? Well, CMSs were created to do one thing, to enable you to manage content without code. That's really what it is. A CMS is like a Word application, but for the Word. Whereas Word's producing a document, a CMS produces a website. Um, does, does that mean we have some rules and restrictions around it? Yes, just like Word can't produce um, a video uh, document, for example, a CMS has some restrictions on how it can be used. Um, because it is fitting into that application, then you are a bit more restricted. But taking a step back up from that, um, so we looked at, we've got an index.html. Uh, now, what we do in an actual um, theme is we're adding PHP variables. So you can see what we've kind of got here, but it's all actually easy to see. But what we've got here now, this is the exact same page as before. So that's with all the HTML calls. This is it. So what we're doing up here is where we were printing out um, our CSS files, we're calling a variable called styles. Um, where we're printing our JavaScript, we're now calling a variable called scripts. Where we're printing our languages and our namespaces, etc., we're all calling that through variables now. A content is coming to a variable called content, menu is coming to variables called menu. So basically, at the end of the day, when you look at the Drupal site, this is looking at the Drupal site, you can see when you're building it, you're looking at PHP variables. When you're printing it out on the web, you're actually printing out HTML. So each one of those variables holds HTML um, and builds that actual page for you. So it's basically the difference. That's why we refer to static and dynamic. Because in the old way, it's very static. In the new way, what we're doing is being very dynamic with it. But really, that's really what a theme basically is. Is it HTML with static that's ripped out of it and put in some um, 
PHP variables. And that's the same, the variables are obviously different, but that's the same across pretty much all the CMSs. It's all really nice. <laughs> but what does it mean? <laughs> How does it affect this? Well, to change the way the Drupal looks, you have to use the theme. So you need to change your site, your theme, from the appear appearance menu option in Drupal. So we touched on that in some of the previous sessions. So what at the top of our top menu bar, we have a little option called appearance. Appearance is basically what holds all our, um, holds all our themes. So um, a theme, the theme can consist of a couple of TPL files, can consist of one TPL file, CSS files, things may consist of many TPL files. You can actually, in Drupal, the way that Drupal is set up, um, you can get away with creating a thing that has a .info file and a CSS file, because we'll talk about this later on, but you're actually inheriting a lot of things from core. Um, so whatever you don't have will be pulled up through core. I uh, won't go too much because we literally go quite deep into how the inheritance works a little bit. So where do Drupal themes live? So we spoke about this before. Um, when you're in Drupal, and we've talked about, in one of the first meeting, we talked about hacking the core versus doing it the Drupal way. So there's, if you look under your main site, you're going to see a folder called themes. That's actually what you call the core themes. So that's Darwin, Bartik, Darwin's down there, Bartik, Seven. We never really want to be changing the themes in that folder. Not only do we not want to be changing the things in that folder, we don't really want to be using them as a base thing to create from because they really are just there to kind of get the system up and running. Um, they're really not good to copy and paste from because a lot of them don't. They're a little bit more complex and have all the information through. So that's kind of, no, you know, not taking a copy of a core thing, but it's better to take a copy of a contributed thing than it is a core thing. Um, another interesting thing is we can actually set admin theme. Um, and when we set admin theme to something like Garland, Bartek, etc., um, we actually, there's a little bit of a thing in Drupal where if we go to an admin page, we get a page not found, um, we're not allowed to use, and that will still come through from the Bartek theme. So we'll chat about that in a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to... Let me jump to the web and how we get some stuff in there. Um, Bill, have you got the window URLs on your, in your site? Yeah. Yep, okay. So I can jump on that and show them. So the basic files are the things so we spoke about it before. We need a .info, which is pretty much our configuration file. Um, sorry? <coughs> yeah, there you go. Right. If you can give, no, right. If you can give me a um, Firefox.
So um, Drupal, we are focusing on Drupal 7, so there is quite a significant um, change between Drupal 6 and Drupal 7. Uh, if anyone has any questions about the use of Drupal 6 or some stuff about Drupal 7, um, please ask, otherwise I really want to be covering Drupal 6. Um, I'm really good at Drupal 7 in this. Right, so what is the info, um, dot info file? Info.php should be, should be theme.info. Um, that's my late night editing. Think of it as a themes configuration file. Okay, so we know that with applications, with servers, etc., we've got a config file. And that's basically what our .info file is. It is required in a theme. You must have it. Why? Because the .info file is what tells the actual Drupal CMS that you've got a theme and it's living in that particular folder. If it doesn't have a dot, you can put the folder up there, the theme folder up there. If you don't have a dot info file, the CMS will never know it's there, even though the files are there. Um, it needs to be the same name as the folder. So if you've got a folder called um, happy theme, your dot info needs to be happy theme dot info. If you have a folder and it's all lowercase and you put other cases and etc. in it, it's not going to work. So it needs to be exactly the same as that. That's something that we've, so sometimes when we copy themes, we really don't know, okay, dot info, it has to be the same name as that folder. It doesn't need to be the same as the theme name, but the info and the info would do. So we've got a couple of things. So we're declaring in the dot info what our theme name is. We also declare what version, which should be 7.8 <laughs> for us, but if it was a Drupal core, uh, 6, it would be 6.8. We declare what our style sheets and what we're using. So before when we looked at the, um, page.tv we would cook <coughs> in the CSS files from a scripts variable. How did that scripts variable know what files to put in there? Because we've defined them in our .info file that we're using happy.css, style.css, shoppingcart.css. If we haven't declared those CSS in our info file, Drupal will never see them. So you can put them in your theme, but if you haven't declared it, it's not going to pick it up and use it. Um, same thing as with scripts, you need to define all the scripts that you're using. So if you've got 10 different um, JavaScripts that you've added to your theme, you need to list the full 10 of them there. Um, if you, once again, if you spell something incorrect, it's not going to be able to pick it up because that's really what the system's looking at to know. The info file is really telling the Drupal CMS where everything is and how it needs to pull in things to build that page. Uh, another important, really important thing it does um, is declare regions. So regions in our Drupal site, so when we're looking at, um, how do we look at this the other day? So, yes, I mean not the best, but we've got a page there, we've looked at doing a menu, so we might have a menu region at the top, we might have a sidebar, a search region, a content region and a footer region. We need to declare all of these regions in our info file. If we don't declare our sidebar region, but we, we've put the variable in the page or TPO, but we haven't declared it in the info file, we'll never be able to use it. We won't be able to see it. So it has to be declared in the info file for that to come true. Another thing that .info does is declare features. And we're not really going to cover these because Features in a sentence is a whole um, talk on itself. And what I mean by that is, is you know, um, there's some Drupal themes that you use and you're going to say, yeah, give me a logo, give me a, and um, allow me to use the primary, secondary menu. Uh, you can declare ba basic things like that. And then you have other themes um, such as um, Fusion, for example, where what you're going in at your infusion, you've got a lot more features there, so it's asking you how wide is your site going to be, what's the width of your sidebar, first sidebar, second sidebar, that's all declared in features. So this is where we're declaring that in our info file as well. If we don't have those features declared in info, once again, they won't be coming up in our theme. Uh, HTML.tpl.php. Okay, so the signing of a theme, what we're building, HTML literally builds what's in between head to a degree. It's building what's in between head and it's also adding just some basic calls for the rest of it. So if we're looking at this in our page structure, what HTML is doing, it is kind of doing the main stuff that's happening 
Okay, sorry, my um, machine is in downside today, so it's not really good. So now, of course, because Drupal, uh, as with all open source things, uh, because of code is available, you can have a look at all the stuff on the web. So you're never going to remember everything. <coughs> but there's always the web shops. Alright, so we've got our HTML.2 to be You can see here what we're doing is we're calling through CSS files, IDF namespaces, which is um, the 57 is kind of be accessible and then. Um, we're pulling through head titles, but we're also pulling through page top, page bottom, and page. And this is how we're pulling through the rest of this body. So if we're looking at it from a bottom perspective, we'll all see this in one of our blocks before. If this is our page of content, this is our digital page, then head, in a sense, is this big guy. It kind of sits around there. So it's kind of the, the framing of that page, but without kind of really focusing on the layouts or style. It's just really pulling it all in together.
Um, another one is the front front page. So a lot of people might um, create a front page. Did we able to style that front page slightly differently to the rest of the site? The one that we really played, so you know, we set page up and we theme page and we create it to look how we want it to. Um, generally, once we've done that and we're happy with that, we're not coming back to it too much because we've created the main structure of our site in the page. So what we're doing then is we're really looking at theming our node.tpls. So node is kind of, so we're talking about the, I know we carry my whiteboard mark. Um, so we have, talking about here, so we've got page in the centre wrapping around the top one. We've got, that's a HTML or TPL, we've got page in here, and then we're thinking of node as this content that's actually sitting in here. So it is the main page content of our site. So with node, um, because when it comes to the, uh, the frame of the site, as I said, you generally don't want to change it too much once you've created it, but you really do want to change the way the different sections of your site are laid out. So we might have news um, articles, um, and then we might also have um, case studies, for example, or we might have some portfolio pages. Obviously, we want each one of them to be presented and laid out differently. So with nodes and with Drupal, we get into this when we start talking about imperatives, um, but we can be very specific and very granular with how we theme. So with our node, so for example, um, we theme node.tpl.php, that will apply across every single node. We might have a particular node that we want to theme separately, differently, and we can do that by saying node and the node ID, and that will just theme that ID. And we also have content types, which we get into a bit later. And we can actually theme content types by going node dash dash and the name of the content type. So generally in a lot of themes, you'll have your main node.tpl, but you might have two or three or four different other t um, node tpl files that are just theming case studies or they're just theming the news articles, for example. And that's kind of the way that we, we keep in the structure of our site, but then we're able to manipulate and change the content in the middle. Uh, region.tpl. So, as we, we talk about when we were playing with blocks, we put blocks in different regions of our site. Um, we are doing the Drupal Garden site. Regions are basically, in, in an old kind of design, uh, web designer kind of way, I like to define regions as my top layer divs. So when I would used to look at designing a page, creating a page, I'd go, okay, I want to, menu, it's going to theme and style that menu area there. 
and that's kind of how we get around. We clean our different regions. Once again, do we need to clean our regions? We don't need to. It's just giving us that more granular control over our thing, but we certainly don't need it. Putting it all together, all right. <laughs> so it's kind of what I'm paying for you to do. Um, so you can see what we're looking at. So we've got html.tv.php, which wraps around the whole section. Page refers to the actual layout of the page. Node is referring to that content piece in the node. Blocks, because we've got blocks on the side, they're being seen by the block template. Comments is seen by the comment. You can start to see how we're looking at things with boxes inside boxes inside boxes. And that's pretty much how we approach when we're theming, um, when we're theming it. And each step, we're getting more granular to our approach of theming. So in the top one, we're looking at the whole entire page. When we get down to block, we're really just looking at that one block of content. If we were to go, uh, so if we've got news nodes, for example, and we theme node dash dash news, then we're really only theming every time that that news comes in there is what we're theming there. Any questions about that? No? <laughs> and we can do an ID, so we're theming a particular um, node ID. So on a smaller site, we might only have a couple of pages there, so it makes sense to, we, maybe we don't have content types, so we can theme just that ID, so it might be node 50, so we can theme node 50 and style that differently. Um, and then when we've got the content types, we go in dash dash content type. Slightly different to how anybody that's from Drupal 6, slightly different to how we kind of call them in Drupal 6 when you have one dash. I've got two dashes. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of template files, and as you can see, when you're looking at a Drupal site, what we're really doing, all of this existed in index.html. We used to create things in index.html, except here we were creating our block divs, here we were creating our content divs and our comment divs. Now, rather than looking at it from a full page perspective, what we're doing is we're theming each one of those elements by themselves. So that's the kind of difference in the approach that we're taking. You see, we go, okay, I'm going to style a node, and that's going to just style my content. If I style blocks, it's going to style just my blocks. And it also means that the approach that we take when we're designing a Drupal site, it means that we really can go, you know what, I've got the basic look of the site, I'm going to implement that, and then once the client's happy with that or whatever not, and then we start getting into the intricate content stuff, then you can start feeding some of those other blocks and comments. So you don't really have to do everything up front as such. You can go back to it. And you might go back to a site six months later and you might have a need for a new looking block. So you can just create a theme just for that block. So the, mod, the system, the theme system in Drupal is like what Drupal content, um, the content that we see, it's very modular. <coughs> So we can really do that with our themes as well. We can add more templates. So if that wasn't enough, <laughs> um, we can do blocks. And not so we say, so when we looked at the, putting it all together, we can see that we have blocks there, right? And our blocks are generally what we're putting, you know, traditionally we might be putting them in our sidebars, but really blocks as we've seen some of the stuff we've done, blocks are content, supporting content that we can put anywhere throughout the site. So you can theme blocks. Um, the great thing about it, and why a lot of people love doing it, is because Drupal adds a lot of HTML code in it. So if we can, I think I've got in Denland a block one. Drupal 4 modules are adding to it. So it knows that you've just created block 10, 
right? And how it's getting that class. When you look on a Drupal site and you go, I've seen that block, and it's got class block 10, region right, blah, 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 and all of a sudden the class string is like this long. That's where it's getting it from. <laughs> so it's getting it from the block TPL. Some of the things um, that people like to do is actually get in there and change it, obviously. I might not want class block title, I don't need that. I might want to actually put a header and a footer on my block so I can put a little funky bit of image at the top and another little image down at the bottom so I can get into this TPL here and I put a div at the top that says footer, header, and I might put a div down the bottom that says footer. And then I've got those two extra div elements in my blocks now and then we'll come across. Um, and that's kind of some of the key reasons why you, you might want to really change that, that layout. So like anything, as we said, we can go with Drupal, it, it, because we are looking at a real module system, we have the ability to go from block.tpl that applies to every single block to block dash dash region. So if I did block dash dash menu, then that would apply to all the blocks that come up in my menu. So all of a sudden I don't have to like, um, you know, uh, in the old, in Drupal 6 for example, the thing in that, I would actually have to image one of those individual blocks. I wouldn't be able to just apply it to the region. So that's something that's new in Drupal 7. Um, and I can actually theme blocks produced by modules as well now. So that means that um, I might have a module, um, you name for a module. I might have a module, um, a dim sim module. Um, it's producing a lot of dim sim on my website for some reason. And if I want to actually do that, I'd go block dash dash dim sim. I'd actually call that model name, and I can now theme any of the blocks that that module outputs as well, which is something that's, that's a bit new. Um, how, how often are you going to use these things? Probably use block TPL a lot. Um, you probably use block region in a second because you know you might want to make all your sidebar blocks a particular way. Block dash dash module is something that you might use all that often. Um, how do you create all those? The same way with all our, with all the stuff that we're talking about, we take, we take block dot tpl, we make a copy of block, and we'll go through this in a bit more detail. We take a copy of block and we name it block dash dash menu, which is our menu region. Comment. Um, Drupal started life as a social site, social CMS, so a lot of its core functionalities are around allowing people to communicate and share information and comment on things. Um, so comment is, so you, you can be comment wrapper, which in a sense, going back to that kind of same layout structure there, and we had it actually a bit better because we had it in here, didn't we? It's a bit easier way to look at it. So you can see there we've got the comment wrapper, which is how the actual all of the comments look themselves. And then comment.tpl is theming individual comments. So once again, you can see that we've taken this modular approach to how we theme. So comment wrapper, I might put in there a couple of divs um, that gives a nice border around my comment section. And then the comment.tpl, I might make that a little speech bubble one so it looks like each of my users on my site are actually talking from that. Some users maybe that I might do that. So that's pretty much um, all the kind of you know, flexibility that you've got with comment, which is generally enough. Um, just something to raise. We've all worked, we've been working on Drupal sites. Um, we always need to put our site offline every now and then, whether we're doing a large database update um, or whether we're just doing some changes, that is some new modules ourselves. We want to put it offline. If you don't have a maintenance page in your site, you're going to get the default Drupal maintenance, which is that lovely blue one with the little Drupal icon. Because your site, this site is offline. Please come back. In Drupal 6, we actually have to define in our settings file that we were using a separate maintenance. We don't have to do that in Drupal 7. We're just including that now. So as long as you've got maintenance page, um, in there, you're just going to think how you look when your site's offline. It's a pretty important one because a lot of people don't know that. And then you've got this really nice looking site that you've just given to a client, you take it offline, and there's the Drupal icon. 
A lot of the excitement of your fancy site just goes. <laughs> Everyone knows you're running Drupal. <laughs> um, so being the maintenance, how we get around that? Field. All right. So this is where you start going more and more and more granular. Now with Drupal 7, we can theme every single individual field. What does that mean? Um, so you know when we create content types, and in our content types that we've created, we've created fields in that. One of the fields might be um, image, because it might be we created a recipe content type, and we've got an image in that. And with that particular image in the menu, I want to do some, I want to add some CSS around it and add a couple of divs and HTML to it. What I would do is I would open up field.tpl, I'd take a copy of that, and I'd go field dash dash and put my field name in there. Because um, I might want to just do, so I might have a recipe image. Or I might go, you know what, this looks really cool, I want to apply this to every single image across my site. So if I do it in field dash dash field dash image, it's going to apply across to every single one. So all of a sudden, how we were thinking, wow, that's really granular. Now we've got new templates that are coming up in every single one of these areas that are literally just theming that, that field. And that's where it's a lot more work. Um, if we're creating a theme that basically has a page and a node and some basic things, obviously that's not going to take us as much time. But when we want to start getting to a really funky and interesting site, um, we're really looking at theming um, using, using the fields and going a bit more granular. So, oh, tip when you are using fields, you do need to flush the cache. So you need to let the system actually acknowledge that there is a field, TPL there. Um, and you need to, when you're removing it, flush the cache and everything like that, because otherwise it will still think that field TPL is there and if you've just deleted it, it won't be very happy. Why haven't you known? <laughs> you have to flush that cache. Um, Theming is the kind of thing that you do need to do that to. You do need to be flushing cache a lot for when you're doing this. So you'll make a change in a theme and then you'll be flushing the cache to kind of see it. But field is, is very um, particular to that just because it's taking over at that granular level. Um, so you can see the top one, style of fields, fields within that type, so image fields, fields of that name, so it might be recipe image. Um, fields within a particular content type, so it might be the fields in the news. Um, and fields of a field name in a particular content type. So each time we get more and more specific with it. So putting it all together, we haven't got a, we have a little field in it. Um, but basically, you can see that, you know, that's kind of what a basic theme is going to look like. And this is half the way to what we call a more advanced or complex theme. There are rules that apply, that's all things in life, unfortunately. <laughs> But um, you can only use each different te template has different variables that are exposed to it, and you can only use them within those templates. So page has certain variables in it that you won't be able to access, access in Node, and Node has certain variables that you won't be able to access in Page. Um, and that's something to watch out because you might be calling, you might um, be trying to call something in Page that you really um, aren't supposed to be calling. And how do we know? Um, what we can and can't do. Well, the great thing is that within all of our themes, uh, so within all of our actual TPL files, is we're going to get told straight up um, what variables we need to use in it. So, if we're having a look at this, so this is the main system node that Drupal produces from core. the date, display, etc. 
submitted the node URL, etc. So these are all the variables that we can use within those TPL files. Variables that are in node aren't going to be the variables that are in page and vice versa. But the good thing about it is each one of these is quite detailed. So you can see that there is quite a lot that we can use. Um, so we said these are not all variables can be present on all templates. Um, the big rule and the big gotcha for Drupal and what stresses most designers and developers out is this little thing called inheritance. Um, and inheritance exists in the module world when we're developing modules as much as it does in the theme world. Um, but we'll, what we're going to do is just really cover the theme inheritance. Um, so this is Drupal.org's how is, it, how is it all, what we just spoke about before we go into inheritance, how is it all coming together? So you can see there, so we've got example.info where we're defining blocks, defining styles. Um, we're using HTML to build, to build a page, page to structure the layouts, regions are being regions, the blocks are being blocks, nodes being the content, comment wrappers, comments, template.php. Template.php you haven't spoke too much about. You don't need um, to have it in your theme, but sometimes you may want to really change the way that Drupal is displaying something. Um, and it's not just by changing the CSS, you want to actually really change that output. And you're doing that by creating theme pre-processed functions. And when you're creating that, then you're using template.php. So your TPLs should only ever, I mean, you get to some you get to stuff where you inherit sites and this isn't just small sites, this is I know of a large development in the UK at the moment <laughs> um, that had the same thing. They're opening up TPL files and people would put PHP functions straight in, into the TPL file. But that's kind of not uncommon actually to come across when somebody doesn't really understand the system. Um, we can use PHP functions at the ending level, we don't need to, um, but we can. And we're putting them in template.php. It's open source code, so the beautiful thing about it is, is there's a lot of theme pre-processed functions that are out there on the web that are probably going to do exactly what you want. So it might seem a bit scary um, to use it, but for example, you might want to have your menu um, be horizontal instead of um, vertical, and there'll be a pre there'll be a theme. Somebody would have written it somewhere and put it up somewhere that you can copy and paste and just change it to your theme name. And template of PHP is where it would live. So that's our set, a Drupal site. Any, any questions, by the way, because I'm talking here. Feel free. At what level is it better to theme through here than through the where do you make that decision? Okay, so um, say you've got a website that you're happy with. You've inherited a website, it's already got a theme on it, happy with the theme, but you're not happy with some of the page layouts. That's where you use the models. Because you're not, the models aren't changing, you know, when we're talking about, you know, you've got your page structure here, for example. The models, panels and that are going to change, you know, you might change, the, do a menu in panels. Um, you might, this is your content here, you might go, you know what, I actually want to have a row here with three columns and then another row and lay my content out that way. That's what Canvas is going to do for you. Um, you might also go, you know what, um, I, I want to apply CSS on this block, but I don't need a template for it because I only just want to change the CSS on the block. So you can use something like Skinner, a Fusion Accelerator. I should say, because it's not really um, a good set yet. Um, and that's when you can apply, or oh, box CSS is another one, um, module. And that's where you can go in here and go, right, happy CSS now applies to that block. So you don't actually have to change the template if you don't want to. However, if you want to put a header and a footer and other things on there, you're going to have to change the template to add in that HTML code. So that, that's, that's kind of where you, where you make the decision. Is it just page layout? Is it just content layout? 
Well, that's page structure. Yeah, yeah. It's basically the okay, so if you're, if you're playing with structural, it should be through. Through the theme. Through the theme. Yeah. Um, does anyone have a Dream of Seven site that they want me to look at, or are we just going to go to a here? No? Well, I don't necessarily know if I want to pull apart the exam or you know. So let's just look really quickly, right? How do we do this? How do we do this with, with what we're just talking about then? All right. So um, in my page, I can be defining. Um, I can be defining a menu area. I can be seeing that top menu area from there. Um, just defining where I'm putting it in. Maybe I want to kind of style and style that top thing with a region, a menu area region. My search bar there. I can be styling that through that as well, through my theme, so, um, through my search block. So I'd be using search block, search. So within here, let's just say that this is a view. So here I might be theming that within the view theme templates. I've got some sidebar stuff down the side here, so I can be using a region to kind of theme that. Each one of these articles, even though they're only pulling up the sub, they're pulling up the styling from node.tpl and bringing that in. This is kind of like a little quick tax module, so I can be theming that as well. Because again, you can see I've got my different blocks there, so I can have, so you can see that, that they're pretty much using a similar style, so I'd be creating a TPL for that, and you can use that across there. My advertisement area there, that might be a block that I'm applying a particular style to as well. And I've got a footer region, so I can be actually seeing that by feeding the whole type footer region, so I can be using a region to TPL for that. Um, no one has a site that they want to go through that? Okay, so that's kind of the complete, that's a bit of a big dump of the main TPL files that we get. So what we can understand is there's a lot of template files. We can get very, very granular in what we're doing. Um, but as you can see in some of those TPL files, Drupal's pulling in its own classes and its own things um, and IDs and that for its own reason, reason to build that site. So Drupal seems to add heaps of HTML and this pisses people off <laughs> because you go, I want it to look this way, hang on a minute, I've got, wait, this is style and control. And if you look at it in Firebug, you're generally seeing that you're overriding about 10 different styles just to get to the one that you've put on. Why is this occurring? Because Drupal had this thing called Drupal theme inheritance and it's probably one of the most um, kind of important areas to really grasp. So one, Drupal Core applies its own tpl.php. If Drupal Core didn't have tpl.php, it wouldn't be able to bring, build that layer for you. That's how the presentation layer is being built. So that's the reason why we say you don't need to have a region uh, html.tpl.php because if you don't, Drupal's just going to know how to use it from Drupal Core. Drupal modules also apply their own tpl files these get applied second. So this is in the step. So when the system is actually being built, when the page is being built, Drupal Core comes up first. And then Drupal Core looks in the modules file. And in that modules file, it sees the same one that you've got named before. So it's going to overwrite the core one. And then you've got your theme. And your theme has its own TPL files. These are applied last, and they overwrite the other one. So core comes on, no.tpl comes from core. 
you've got a module that actually things you know TPL in a particular way, so it gets overwritten by that. And then you have a no TPL in your thing, it then gets overwritten by that. So we do have this thing of overriding the inheritance that's occurring in every step. How that look? Um, well, interesting, I've taken it between PowerPoint and um, LibreOffice, and the only difference I have is my fonts are slightly bigger. That it. <laughs> it's why you see that it can font by the fonts. All right, so we have this is the theme here. So basically, we started at the bottom here. So straight away, we've got core. So note that TPL gets, over, um, gets applied first. And then core gets overridden by the module node.tpl that we have existing in the modules folder. And then we've got another one that's existing in our theme. So that's going to get applied last. So the theme wins. That's the catch. The theme always wins. So when you're trying to overwrite things, when you're trying to style things in Drupal, you put it into your theme, because the theme is always going to be the top. And what happens when there's nothing to inherit? That's what we were talking about before. So I've got HTML or TPL or PHP as we've been talking about. When the Drupal is running through the bootstrap, when it's actually coming through a building that page, it's going to see, it's going to go, look through the models, I can't find any html.tpl.phbs, so I'm not overwritten yet. It's going to come to the theme. It's not going to see any of your theme. So then, core wins. Core wins because there's nothing stopping it. The, the second that we have something um, in our theme, the theme wins. We don't have it there, or in modules, core wins. If we had it in core, had it in the module, but didn't have it in the theme, the module would win. So that's literally four modules 